everyone. Reverend Deanna Cox here. Sorry I'm a few minutes late with our midweek reflection this week. You know how it goes. Oh, I have time for one more thing. And then you're, that one thing ends up taking longer than you expected. Welcome to the season of Easter. Um, you may or may not know that Easter isn't just a single day, that it is an entire season, and that we the roller coaster of emotions that we talked through um, in Holy Week continue through the season. The joy and wonder of resurrection is mixed in with the terrifying fear that the followers um, had of being persecuted themselves after Jesus' death and uh, in going so far as hiding themselves away or dispersing into the world. And that is then mixed with the joy of Jesus' appearance to the disciples even in those locked, hidden rooms. And then the challenge of his commissioning, telling them to go out to the world and share the gospel with all the nations. It, in the midst of all of that, in the midst of knowing that those who teach in Jesus' name are going to possibly be sought out to be persecuted like Jesus was, and, and knowing that this was just such an uncertain time. And that's when they were told, go and spread the good news. And so, I it, multiple things come to my mind. It it's, I read a poem on Easter Sunday that um, at one point says, let's just go back to fishing. Uh, because at least I understand fish. <laughs> and so I, I imagine that some of the disciples would have felt like that, that, you know what, this is getting a little too crazy. I know our life before really wasn't that great, but at least we knew it. Let's just go back there. And I think that's a tempting feeling is that, you know, when we're asked to do something new, to stretch ourselves in that way, and the temptation is, you know, that's hard, and it's really uncertain, so let's just stick where we're at, because we know that. Um, reminds me a lot of... Um, <laughs> our weather and, you know, driving really seems uncertain these last few days. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, maybe I should just stick at home because at least I know what the conditions are inside. But the call is for us to go out and to spread the good news to all the nations. <sighs> the call is to, and of course, I am not in any way suggesting that we need to get out when it's truly unsafe for us to do so. So um, just a, a, it just was an interesting kind of analogy that slipped into my head. So we, as I said, we're getting to this time of year also includes the Great Commission, which is the Jesus commanding them to go out and to spread the word of God. And that this happens in this time of chaos and uncertainty. And so, yes, we can understand we live in a world that often does feel chaotic and uncertain. And so I'm sure we can relate to the disciples' trepidation. When the world feels angry, it can be very hard to be the voice of love, calling people to act out of love instead of out of hurt and anger. 
And actually, it can even be hard to find that love within ourselves some days. And so, um, we have a Bible study coming up, which I'm going to shamelessly promote now. It is um, the Christian Perspectives on War. We are joining again with Reverend Scott Reynolds, and we are having a Bible study for six weeks, starting next Tuesday, uh, April 26th. It's going to be via Zoom because we have the community that we gather is kind of far and wide, which is interesting which is, and exciting. And so the Bible study is six weeks starting next Tuesday via Zoom, 7.30 till 9 p.m. And again, it's on the Christian perspectives of war. And so as I was starting to do some of some research and preparation for that, I came across this quote that says, the culture of an organization is shaped by the worst possible behavior the leader is willing to tolerate. The culture of an organization is shaped by the worst behavior the leader is willing to tolerate. And this, this quote makes me think of our world. The leaders that we elect and choose the, our, makes us think of the world, the churches, throughout history, throughout time, and it makes me think of Jesus. If we tolerate slander and violent language towards each other in our leaders, whether that be in the church, in our community, in our schools, in our politics, or in our world, then that is the shape that our culture, that our lives and like our communities and our world, that's the shape that they're going to take. So that, that gets me thinking about how we lead in our lives the messages we share on social media, the stories we share at coffee, and the stories we listen to at coffee. We have leaders in every group where we gather, whether that's informal or formal elected leadership. And the way, the behaviors that we tolerate will shape those groups. So I think about Jesus and his responses to the leadership of the time and the behaviors that Jesus was willing to tolerate um, up to Christmas or up to Easter. Sorry, it's snowing outside. It makes me think of Christmas. Uh, up to Easter, we hear this story, of, um, and actually I don't think we focused on it this year, but there is the story of Jesus overturning the tables in the temple because he couldn't, he could no longer tolerate the behavior uh, that those money changers were perpetuating. He, he didn't have anything against the, in those individuals, but it was the, the culture that it was perpetuating of exclusion um, and those who could afford to get the best uh, offerings were allowed into the temple and those who couldn't were excluded. And Jesus was sure that this love was for all. And so he was, he was standing for that. So it just, it just makes me think that the culture of an organization is shaped by the worst or the best that the leader exhibits and tolerates and allows. So this Sunday, I don't have a particular passage to share my thoughts on because this Sunday we are going to embrace a little bit of that Easter chaos in that 
we are going to share a spontaneous worship service. Now, what that means is that those who gather in person will decide the biblical stories that we share, which hymns we sing, and what types of things will be included in our prayers. It doesn't mean that they have to lead them. It's just we will share, we will make those decisions together. It will be a rich and meaningful service still, just perhaps a little more chaotic or unpolished compared to how it sometimes is. <laughs> now, I know that there are some people that feel uncomfortable sharing spontaneously in this way. And so you are also welcome to submit any hymn requests or scripture readings you would like to hear expanded upon or just to hear because they're your favorite or any prayer requests you would like us to hold. Not like, not just our prayers for our community and beyond, but also like if there's I don't know, a way of praying that you want to experience, you can share that as well. And you can send those requests to me directly or to the office. And um, so we are going to uh, share in this spontaneous service on Sunday. And you're also welcome to just attend and receive. Participate, per, blah, blah. oh boy, Easter Sunday tongue-tiedness is still existing. You are welcome to just per receive. You don't have to submit a request or answer questions. You can just come and receive the beautiful service that we create together. So friends, as our world starts to come alive, especially with this added moisture we have received, as it comes alive and our lives become, uh, you know, consumed with seeding and calving and prepping plants for the garden and planning camping trips, things like that, as we begin to shift our lives from indoors to outdoors, in whatever busyness that starts to fill our calendars, may we be mindful, always mindful, that the behavior we tolerate around us shapes not only our lives, but our community and our world. In the chaos of life, May we remain firmly grounded in God's love and grace. I cannot wait to experience the Holy Spirit moving on among us on this Sunday. And I hope you will tune in and see what transpires. Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this midweek reflection for the Sunday after Easter or the second Sunday of Easter, because Easter is more than just a day. Take care. God bless.